Welcome back to another episode of Hair B&B Podcast, where I help you level up your skills and your business. I'm your host, Marella Manelli, and today we're going to be diving into a topic that's on everybody's mind, and that's navigating through the recession as a hairstylist. Oh my God! Okay, it's happening! Everybody stay calm! What's, What's the procedure, everyone? Calm. Calm. What's the procedure? Stay Recessions can be a scary time for any industry, but for us in the beauty industry, it can feel particularly daunting. Now, everybody says that the beauty industry is recession proof, but as someone who has lived and worked as a hairstylist through one of the largest economic crashes, and I'm talking the Great Recession of 2008, I saw a completely different story. And I'm going to be honest, some of you listening to this are not going to be hairstylists in the next six months to a year, and some of you will allow this coming recession to dictate your future career path. If you don't start implementing the things that you should be doing in your business right now, today, you will see a downturn in clients, retention, and sales. And I want to prepare you for what's possible to come so that way you can get in front of it. Now, a while ago, I shared an episode titled five ways to prepare for the recession as a hairstylist. So after you listen to this one, I want you to go back to that one, take some notes on what you need to implement today. And I'm also going to link it down below in the show notes. So that way you can find it because I do think there's some valuable takeaways and ideas in there. Now in this episode, I want to share with you my own experiences from the 2008 recession, a time when I was working at Ulta as a salon manager. I saw firsthand how different segments of our industry responded to the economic downturn and I learned some valuable lessons that can actually help you thrive even in these tough times. So let's get right into it. Welcome to Hair B&B, a podcast about hair, beauty, and business. Hi, I'm Marella Manelli and I help hairstylists just like you streamline this entrepreneur roller coaster you're on so you can start feeling like the CEO that you are. So grab a glass and be ready to simplify your hair, beauty, and business goals. Back in 2008, the economic landscape was incredibly challenging and many independent salons were hit really hard. I saw so many talented hairstylists feeling the pressure and their client base started to dwindle as people cut back on discretionary spending. Some had to close their businesses or switch careers entirely and it was heartbreaking to see, especially knowing how much passion and effort goes into building a salon from the ground up. Now, if you're wondering if the beauty industry is recession proof, my short answer is yes and no. Something you need to understand is that if people don't have money or jobs, they're not going to spend any money, not even on beauty services. And what we went through in 2020 is completely different than what we went through in 2008. According to Forbes, the Great Recession of 2008 to 2009 was the worst economic downturn in the U.S. since the Great Depression. Domestic product declined 4.3%. The unemployment rate doubled to more than 10%, home prices fell roughly 30%, and at its worst point, the S&P 500 was down 57% from its highs. People lost a ton of money in the stock market, people's 401ks took a huge hit, and people who could afford these luxury services lost their jobs. So I want to share a story with you. I vividly remember the day that the stock market crashed. I had a client that sat in my chair who was in her 60s and she was getting ready to retire. I remember that entire year before she would share how excited she was about retiring. She would share all of her plans, her bucket list vacations, and all of the places that she wanted to see. But that day when the market crashed, her whole future retirement plans completely changed. As she was getting her hair done with me, I remember she pulled out her phone and she was looking at the news and the stocks and she couldn't believe what was happening. I remember the panic in her eyes and she was like, no way is this happening. She then opened another app on her phone that showed the status of her 401k and almost 50% of her 401k savings completely gone within seconds. With tears in her eyes, she had that realization that she was not going to be able to retire like she planned. This was so devastating to her. Not only did half of her life savings go away in a blink of an eye, but home prices started to depreciate, meaning all of the equity that she also built from the home she owned was also not worth what it once was. Again, affecting her retirement plans of selling her home and cashing out on everything she had built, and her American dream was completely shattered. Decades of time that she worked and invested completely worth nothing. That is the impact that the 2008 recession had. As a hairstylist, I had to witness this time and time again. But to be completely honest, I couldn't even relate to some of the things that these people were experiencing because I didn't own a home. I didn't invest in a 401k, but I was $40,000 in credit card debt. Because I have $30,000 in credit card debt. 
When they call, I tell them I can't pay it back yet. Living paycheck to paycheck, watching my hairstylist friends struggle to keep their clients and me wondering if I was next. Now, how I got out of debt to owning a home and building a seven figure business is a completely different story, which I might share on a future episode. Now, a lot of my friends who were working at independent salons in Southern California were struggling. Now, something to know is that California has more salons per capita than any other state. And I guess you can say we really love feeling beautiful. But what my hairstylist friends saw was a huge decline in blonding services and holes in their day, a rise in no-shows, and people skipping their hair appointments. And some even started sharing chairs so that way they could afford the booth rent. And I even saw booth rent salons offering single-day chair rental just so they can keep the lights on. Shit was tough, and hairstylists didn't even know how to navigate through it. Meanwhile, I was working at Ulta as a salon manager, which is a corporate salon chain. And our story was quite different. Despite the recession, we were kind of thriving. Now, why was that and what made the difference? So first, let's talk about the benefits of working at a corporate salon chain during tough times and how we hairstylists, independent hairstylists, and independent salon owners can learn from it. Now, one thing Ulta had was the resources for significant marketing campaigns and promotions. Keep in mind, these are pre-Instagram days, so marketing yourself looked completely different, and today, we actually have a huge advantage. Ulta's marketing campaigns brought in a steady stream of clients looking for affordable luxury. It was something that independent salons didn't offer or couldn't offer because maybe they had to close their doors and a lot of hairstylists moved. Now, people might have cut back on their expenses, but many still sought out those small indulgences like a fresh haircut or a new hair color, and especially if it was part of a promotion. Some of these promos that Ulta offered were like a free haircut with a color service or a free gloss with a touch-up service, and this was really geared towards those first-time clients. But another thing that Ulta did so extremely well was rewarding their existing clients with points. Clients would rack up their points, cashing them in for free services, and this really built a loyalty with their clientele, and in turn, they didn't really feel like they were breaking the bank. What what clients saw in that was value, and if you're a good hairstylist working at Ulta, you definitely were building really quickly. In 2008, I was racking in $2,000 a week in services, only working four days a week, and that's not even including my tips. My hairstylists, even the new ones, were almost doing the same. Between 2008 and 2013 was the time that I grew my salons to be one of the top five salons in the entire company even during a recession. Now, I'm not sharing this info with you to tell you to cut back on your prices or create these crazy promotions, but what I am sharing is some insight so that way you understand the value. What you have to do is continuously evolve with what's happening around us. And marketing and promotions is something that Ulta got right. But don't get it twisted because value does not equal price. Price is what you pay, but value is what you get. Let me say that again. Price is what you pay and value is what you get. What your clients could get could be a five minute head massage while you're applying conditioner on their hair or a warm towel with essential oils or a seamless check-in and checkout process, a valuable point system or email promotions to reward existing clients. There are so many ways that you can add value without cutting profit. Now, the next thing that Ulta did extremely well was having an abundance of product availability. Being part of a large chain meant that we had access to a wide range of products and we could offer competitive prices. And clients appreciated the convenience and the perceived value they were getting, which really kept them coming back. What's crazy is I can't tell you how many times clients would come in from another hair salon where they just got their hair done and ask if we had a particular product for sale. Sometimes I would ask them, why didn't you just buy this? product at the salon that you were just at. And many of the responses were they just didn't offer it to me. <laughs> like, do you know how crazy that sounds? Your client drove all the way to Ulta to buy a hair product because you didn't grab it off of the shelf and give it to them and tell them to buy it. The lesson here is that your client shouldn't have to ask you about the products that you're using. You should be educating them and telling them about the product during the service and then grab those products off the shelf and have them available at the front and offer it to them when they're checking out so they know that you actually even sell those products. I wanna share another crazy story with you that has a really valuable lesson. This one time a customer walked into Ulta looking to purchase a product 
That was used by her stylist from the salon down the street, and she just got her hair done, and it was evident because she had these crazy color stains all around her hairline. And I remember asking her why she just didn't buy that product from her hair stylist, because I was always curious, like, why this constantly happened. And she blatantly told me that she wasn't even sure that the stylist carried the product at her salon because... Again, it wasn't offered to her. What was even crazier is that she was completely aware of the color stains on her skin because she was actually kind of embarrassed at the fact that she was walking around with this crazy stain looking like she just got her grays freshly touched up. Like it completely defeats the purpose of getting the grays touched up in the first place. Like you don't want to look like you color your hair. But what this did is give me the perfect opportunity to offer her something that her stylist couldn't. And that was walk her back to my salon and simply take a color remover wipe and remove the color stain around her hairline. She was so excited that she didn't even know that color wipes even existed because her stylist, again, never offered that. She said she would try to just shampoo it off and it never worked. So she just assumed that in order to get her hair color done, she had to suffer through a few days of stained skin. This customer not only purchased the product that she was looking for, but I offered her something that was so valuable and that was leaving the salon not looking like she just got her hair color done. She left Ulta with my card and lo and behold, she had an appointment on my books a few weeks later. What her longtime hairstylist couldn't offer her was something so simple like a color remover wipe to remove the color stains. What that color remover wipe provided was added value to the client because now she felt confident in the hair that was just done for her. Lesson here is offer the products and educate your clients about the products during and then even after their hair appointment. And please, Do your clients a favor, don't let them leave the salon with color stains. Thank you. The last thing that Ulta did extraordinarily right was invest in its employees by providing ongoing training and development opportunities. This not only helped me improve my skills, but it also gave me inspiration and the confidence to offer the best services to my clients. One thing I've learned after taking color or a cutting class, and I have all these brand new ideas, is I'm so excited to come back to the salon and offer these new skills to my clients. And what this does is it makes my clients excited about it too, and they're also excited to kind of change things up a little bit. Because let's be real, clients get bored so easily. And when they get bored and you're doing the same services again and again, they might go somewhere else. This is why it's so important to continuously ask your clients how they're feeling about their hair. What they say is going to guide you on the types of add-on services that you can offer. And the worst thing that they're going to say if you offer these services is... No. When times get tough is when you need to start investing in your skills. So take the education. And taking education doesn't mean you need to spend thousands of dollars either. One thing I did early on in my career is I spent every Sunday and Monday taking free or low-cost classes at my local distributor store. Most of them were topics on product knowledge or simple technique classes, but a lot of these same classes that I took at the distributor store are now available for free online through your favorite brands. Another great free option which can seem a little controversial for some is my YouTube channel. You can take advantage of all the free hair tutorials that I have available online. And if you're ready to level up your skills and business, I created Hairbnb University. It's an affordable subscription-based platform I built specifically for hairstylists. Open enrollment only happens a few times a year, but it's a great space to not only have those in-depth hair tutorials on color correction, highlighting, updo, styling, social media, and business, but there's a community of other hairstylists just like you built right inside where you can learn from. And if you want to learn more about this amazing platform that I built just for you, make sure you head to hairbnbuniversity.com or check out the show notes down below. So what can we learn from the 2008 recession that applies today? Here are some key takeaways. Number one, diversify your income streams. So whether you're an independent salon or hairstylist, finding multiple revenue streams can provide a safety net. This could be through retail sales, offering micro services, or even creating digital content on multiple platforms. That way you can start promoting your services and your products. Number two, build a strong client relationship. In tough times, your relationship with your client is more important than ever. Offer personalized services, follow up with them, and make them feel valued. And please, for the love of God, please invest in some color wipes, people, and offer them the damn retail products at the end of the service. I promise they're going to love you for that. Remember, the worst thing that they can say is no. A loyal client is more likely to continue to support you even when they're cutting back on expenses. 
Number three is invest in your skills and never stop learning. The more versatile and skilled you are, the more valuable you become. Clients are willing to pay for expertise, especially if it's something they can't replicate at home. Number four, leverage technology, use social media and online booking systems to your advantage. They can help you reach a broader audience and streamline your operations. During the 2008 recession, we didn't have many digital tools at our disposal, but today these can be a game changer. Number five, stay positive and adaptable. Attitude is everything. So you need to stay positive and be ready to adapt to the changing circumstances. Flexibility can make a significant difference in how you weather the storm. Believe me, I get it. Recessions are tough, but they also present opportunities for innovation and growth. By learning from past experiences and staying proactive, you can navigate through the challenging times and come out stronger on the other side. Now this wraps up this episode on navigating through the recession as a hairstylist and lessons we can learn from the 2008 recession. And I want to thank you so much for joining me on Hair B&B Podcast. And I hope you found this episode helpful. Get more free education on my website at morellawanelli.com as well as YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. But if you're looking for more education on hair and business, make sure you check out Hair B&B University. It's the ultimate business makeover specifically for hairstylists. It's a place where you can learn at your own pace turn your passion into profit and gain confidence behind the chair and all you have to do is tap the link down below in the description notes and sign up for the wait list to be the first to know when open enrollment starts finally subscribe to the show on your favorite streaming platform and if you found value in this episode i'd appreciate a rating or simply tell a friend to listen in now i'll see you on the next episode and be ready to simplify your hair beauty and business goals on hair bnb cheers <laughs>